Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sol. So for today's video, I am going to have a sit down and a talk with you um, about my hair journey. It's been a long two years to get it to where it is now. I am so happy with it now and so excited to share this journey with you guys and um, tell you the stories and just talk about natural hair. Natural hair is not talked about enough because there are cultures still in which natural hair is not appreciated. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Also subscribe to my channel before you leave. If you want to know whenever I upload videos, I usually do it on Tuesdays. Hit, hit that little bell button right next to the subscribe button and you will get a notification every time I upload. And don't forget to follow me on my social media. So that is Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. <laughs> so if you want to hear about my story and my journey, please keep on watching. Okay guys, so let's start from the beginning. I'm going to try to keep it short because if I talk, this video will be an hour. Um, by the way, I am wearing a top. It's just an off the shoulder, but <laughs> it's there. Um, anyways, so basically... I'm from the Dominican Republic and ever since I was born, not ever since I was born, but when I was young, like I want to say since I was like five, um, it's always been a routine to go to the hair salon, get my hair done because straight hair looks better. It looks more presentable, it looks classier, you know, that's what I grew up believing and Whenever you saw somebody with curly hair, you could hear everybody kind of talking about them in a negative way. Like, oh my god, did she even brush her hair? Did she, does she take care of herself? You know, so I always had that internal feeling that my hair wasn't good enough. And that if I wore my natural hair, I was ugly. You know, and th that's exactly how I felt with my natural hair. I felt ugly. Um, so I will always go to the hair salon, always get it done. Um, I even started getting it relaxed and texturized um, for a few years and I would go on and off and do it and not do it, do it and not do it. My hair doesn't really need to be relaxed, but you know, we all experiment at some point, sometime in our lives. So um, I moved to the United States and my sister would wear her hair curly all the time. So I started kind of liking my curly hair a little bit better but I was still not there I still didn't feel pretty in it it was just kind of like oh I'm just gonna wear my curly hair today you know whatever I don't feel like doing anything to it I don't feel like straighten it um fast forward I relax it one more time this is when I'm living in Florida all of my hair fell out and I was so in shock I was like oh my god what happened to my hair it just fell off I can't believe it you know but I still kept on applying heat to it I still kept kept on going obviously texturizers whoever has done it out there you know that you kind of just have to grow it out there's nothing you can really do to take it out of your hair you just have to let it grow so here we go my hair is growing then I decided to get blonde highlights, which wasn't the best idea. Um, you know, just a, a ball of stuff that it just wasn't good for my hair. Um, then my hair ended up growing, the texturizer ended up kind of growing out, but I was still straighten my hair every single week religiously. And I was living so restricted because if it was raining, which if you live in Florida, or if you're from Florida, or been in Florida, um, you do know that it, it rains basically every single day during the summer. It's super humid. Um, so whenever there was rain, I was like, oh my god, I can't get my hair wet. Whenever there was, um, if I had to work out, I had to keep it to a minimum so my hair wouldn't get frizzy or sweaty underneath. You know, just all these things that I had to deal with from a day-to-day -day basis. And it was just ridiculous. It was like, why? Um, then I, um, this was in 2000, it actually has been a year, not two years. I said a two year journey, it's been a year. Um, last year in March, 
I, well, before March, I had planned a trip to the Dominican Republic with my family. And I was kind of, I kind of felt responsible for planning everything. So I got super, super stressed out. Again, a lot of my hair fell out. It just fell out. Like I had patches of hair in my hands. It was really bad. Um, and at this time, my hair was kind of blondish, but kind of toned down. It wasn't that damaged. I, I, I really think that it was stress that made my hair fall. And again, I just felt ugly. Like I just felt like I have no hair anymore. What did I do? I used to have such beautiful, full head of hair and it was always long and what happened you know why did i let it get to this so we went to the dominican republic obviously over there i went to the beach you know i was always in water so my hair was kind of curly then we come back from the dominican republic and i just told my boyfriend i'm like i'm just gonna let it be i'm just gonna let my hair be you know um try not to put heat on it i'm gonna try to go a month without putting heat on it. I was trying to be realistic because I knew that I'm the type of person that if I try to do something that's very difficult and put a long term time for myself, I will give give up. So I kind of give myself a short term time. That way I can see that I can do it and then I can go on, you know? So I started with a month. Well, here comes the product buying. When you go through a natural hair journey, it is, oh my God, so many products. Obviously, we all have different types of hair, and you just kind of have to find the products that work for you. I was trying to find products that would not break my bank, and I was trying to find, because I was testing them, um, and then I was also trying to find products that wouldn't load my hair with product, because... In my opinion, a natural hair looks better with the least amount of products possible. Um, so I started buying Shea Moisture, um, Carol's Daughter, Curls. Then I transitioned into Diva Curls. So it is a long journey. This was months. Before I tried Diva Curl, it took me, I want to say, like, I was into my natural hair journey for like about three four months um and i started liking it people started reacting to it people started saying oh my god your hair is so beautiful you your it, it, it goes better with your structure your face i don't know it was like something in me that i was like yeah why did i ever think that it wasn't beautiful why did i ever think that my hair wasn't good enough you know um so it kind of started like that. Then I started playing with hairstyles, braids, buns, you know, just everything. And fast forward through time, I have found that I can do anything with my hair. I am super blessed to even have hair. You know, there are people who out there who have genetic diseases who their hair falls off. Um... And there are people who have diseases with medications like cancer who make their health hair fall off. So I think that we should all be grateful for what we have. Um, I have learned, I have made mistakes in my hair. I've cut it myself. You know, I've, I've given my hair myself a couple, a couple bad haircuts that I do regret. Um, so you see me wear a lot in buns, wear a, a lot up. Uh, just because, again, I was insecure about it. Um, but... You know, it, it's, it's just about knowing yourself and knowing that you're worth it and knowing that it doesn't really matter how your hair looks. Your hair, it's you. It's what you were born, it's what you were born with. Um, it's what God gave you. If you believe in God, it's, you know, it's, it's who you are. So you need to learn to accept it. And I get so happy when I see all of these awesome people who are embracing their natural hair, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with every once in a while wanting to change it up, wanting to straighten it, wanting to, you know, put a wig on maybe, whatever the case may be, because, you know, we're girls, we experiment, and it's fun. It's fun to change it up every once in a while, but I must say that this year and a half, I would say, journey has been very difficult it's been 
there's been tears, there's been smiles, there, it's, it's been eye-opening. Eye and, you know, it's really boost, uh, boosted my confidence a lot. And now I know that the way I am is enough. And whoever's not willing to accept that, then they're not going to be a part of my life. But I'm just telling you guys this because I want you to know that you are enough. And if you are going through this her journey, it is going to be difficult. It is going to be frustrating. And you just need to be patient. Um, now, I recently just got a cut about a month ago now and colored um, because it was black, you know, and my hair naturally is not pitch black. It's actually kind of brown. Um, it's, it's really close to the color that I have on my base. Um, and... I just kind of wanted to kind of waken it up so that it represented me and how I feel inside, which is very happy and, and alive. And my hairstylist, who I've had for years now um, in Florida, when I went to visit, I told her, I was like, I want you to give me color and cut, but do not jeopardize my curls. My curls are the most important thing for me. And this is, this, this, this is what she did and she did an awesome job and this is kind of like a hairstyle that I've been rocking it's just my hair is just up and like a little fluffy bun and you know my bangs and whatnot and I, I think I look beautiful um currently I used all different products I use curls I use diva curl to wash my hair um I use you know, just different things and different te techniques. I will say that a very important thing uh, when you're going through your journey is to always moisturize your hair. Um, natural hair is, tends to be very, very dry and you always want to keep it moisturized. You always want to keep it looking, um, not looking, but feeling nice you know you know when your hair needs something you, you can feel it on it so i would say it's very important to find a good deep conditioner that you can maybe leave overnight i usually leave it overnight um if you don't have greasy hair because yes some curly hairs have greasy hair too um i will leave oils overnight you know if my hair is super dry i definitely put an oil in it leave it overnight you know my pillow looks like a hot mess in the morning but who cares my hair is what's important you know a pillow we can replace i can't replace this hair so um yeah it's it's a journey and it was an eye-opening journey for me and i couldn't be happier with myself now and i hope that i was able to inspire some of you guys to maybe begin your journey and if you have had your journey, then write about it in the comment section. I would love to read it. And if you're going to start your journey and you have any questions, please feel free to ask me because I will love to answer them for you. Maybe something that worked for me will also work for you. Um, and yeah, that's all I can say. I just wanted to kind of sit down and talk to you guys about this and have like a you know, one-on-one -on -one interaction. I'm, I'm always filming videos and, you know, although I don't have a lot of subscribers right now, I know that people out there are watching and I just want to connect and communicate with you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I love talking to you guys and I will see you guys on my next video.